Update 4 on Tropical Cyclone Soroja has been extremely stubborn in terms of its intensification phase. Located at 16.0 degrees south, 114.0 degrees east. It is 11 a.m. in Paratha, April 8th. It has winds of 50 miles an hour, a pressure of 992 millibars, and it is moving southwest at about 10 miles an hour. No CDPS as of right now due to the extreme uncertainty about this storm. Here it is on the map to give you a better visual as to where this system is. The Tropical Storm Force wind extent is much lower than it was yesterday. Tropical Storm Force winds now only extend 20 nautical miles to the eastern half and 55 to 60 nautical miles on the western half. It is 376 miles away from Caratha, 407 from Exxon, 491 from Coral Bay, 879 from Geraldton, and 1104 from Perth. It is 605 kilometers for Caratha, 655 for Exmouth, 790 from Coral Bay, 1414 from Geraldton, and 1777 from Perth. No cyclone watches yet, but that will be changing within the next day or so, especially as it gets closer towards Australia. Here is where we rank against other agencies. Joint Typhoon Warning Center also going with 50 miles an hour, and the Peru Meteorology is also going with 50, so we are all in agreement that this storm is about 50 miles an hour permanently. Here is the cone on the system. I should be noting that this is a very uncertain future for this storm, especially as it begins its interaction with 27S. But as of right now, we do think that this will still reach major cyclone status before making landfall somewhere in Western Australia before quickly racing off and turning extra chocolate towards day 5. It's a definitely a wait and see game to see what happens between Saroja and 27S, as that will definitely be. Uh, impact of the future of this system and 27. Here are sea surface temperatures. It is now in that 29 to 30 degree Celsius isotherm, which makes it very shocking that this has not begun the rapid intensification phase that it was supposed to by now. So uh, it's in perfect conditions in terms of sea surface temperatures. It has not been utilizing them yet. Here's the intensity models. Everything is still thinking that it's going to be reaching at least category 2. Uh, probably up to Category 4 uh, from some models like HWRF. Shear is on a gradual decline as well, although that will be skyrocketing come the end of this week. Sea surface temperatures are remaining very warm for right now, although that will take a massive drop off as well towards this weekend. The environment for the system is at its driest point right now, but that should slowly increase again as we get into tomorrow, and that will probably be the main phase of its intensification. Here it is on satellite, it is clearly visible the interaction is now having with 27S, also known as a Fujiwara effect, and that will be something that we'll be watching closely over the next two or three days as this system interacts with this other cyclone. And that's what's been making this cyclone very hard to forecast, the fact that these interactions that this system is having uh, could have very severe implications towards the future of both systems. And that is something we have to watch over the coming days as we head into the weekend.